Hey folks, how you guys doing? Hope you are all having a great day today. Now through the Christmas season, I made several gifts that I did not record a video for. Instead, I just took cell phone pictures throughout the build process. Not dealing with a video camera is much faster for quick projects such as this. And also, I, I kind of wanted to take a little bit of time off during the holidays. So that's what this is. This is a picture video. The design process for this started by searching images online for inspiration and coming up with something that the boss lady, aka my wife, approved. The whole idea was hers and she had final approval on the design, so we settled on an easy to build corner design that did not use much material, kind of utilizing the two walls of the room. One and a half sheets of plywood and six eight foot two by fours is all that's needed. I started with the ladder, and although this can be made by using 2x4s right off the shelf with no milling at all, I decided to joint and plane all of the 2x4s to one and a quarter inch by three inches in width, not only to clean up the manufacturer mill marks, but also give the ladder kind of a, a lighter appearance. To make the ladder a little more inviting to the hands and feet, I put a one half of an inch roundover on the front edges and a one quarter inch roundover on the rear edges of the ladder sides and the ladder rungs, all of them, they got a one half of an inch roundover on all of the long edges. Pocket hole joinery is plenty strong enough for this application. Each ladder rung will get two pocket holes per end. Pocket holes make assembly incredibly quick and all of the pocket holes were facing down on the ladder rungs and the rungs were spaced evenly. Now I did lean this up against my workbench and tried to climb up it, well, I did climb up it, and it held my weight with absolutely no problem. I believe I made the ladder rungs about two and a half inches wide, so they were inset on both the front and back of the ladder sides, and the ladder platform was next to be made. Quick and easy, once again, with pocket hole screws. This is just a rectangular frame with a center divider. All of the plywood was cut according to my layout diagram, or so I thought. <laughs> you can see the bottom piece of plywood in this image it's the same 48 inch width as my assembly table. It wasn't supposed to be. It was supposed to be ripped to a specific width, but I completely forgot to do that particular cut before I did all the other decorations to the top. And you'll see later on when I found out that this was a mistake. My wife was very specific about wanting a castle design. So the, the crenels or the notches on top of a castle, there, there's a lot of different terms for these. They were a must. To make them all look the same, I made a quick MDF template, traced it out onto the plywood wherever needed, roughed out the bulk of the waste with a jigsaw, and then used a flush trim bit in my router to transfer the smooth template shape to all of the cuts. The left edge of the tall plywood side will be against the wall, so a notch is needed for the baseboard in the room, uh, for the plywood to fit around the baseboard. And this notch is much larger than the baseboard, uh, but a scribed fit, it's not necessary in this case. I, I just need it to fit in place, and it doesn't have to be perfect. This isn't a built-in piece of furniture. It's just a cool fort that my daughter's eventually gonna outgrow, and it will be removed. My plan was to have a rectangular window in the large wall, but I decided to go with a, a star theme for a little bit more of an interactive design. On the short upper wall, I used my CNC machine to cut three randomly placed stars. And for the large wall, I used the CNC to cut a template to once again use a router to transfer the cut to the plywood. Now all of that can be done with just a jigsaw and say uh, sandpaper or a file to clean up the cut edges. Uh, but before paint, I rounded all of the plywood edges with a one quarter of an inch roundover bit, and I drilled pocket holes on the back side of the short wall. If you're wanting a paint recommendation color for your next man cave project, then Valspar Flower Girl is a must. That's what we used here anyway. The paint we went with was one of the more expensive options to paint and prime all in one application and the results were surprisingly good. We thought for sure, because this was just bare wood, that we were gonna have, it was definitely gonna have to be a two coat job, but one coat actually turned out great. We also painted just the short wall white for a very easy way to get a two-tone accent to the whole project. The next day during my daughter's nap, we started the assembly in her playroom and here's a pro tip for you. Don't use a really loud impact to drill into some uh, wall studs while your daughter's sleeping in the next room. 
Dummy Me did that and woke her up. But first, the platform frame was secured to the wall with a few three inch screws into the wall studs and the platform was just set in place on top. Both wall panels were set in place and temporarily held with clamps and this is when I realized the mistake of the large wall being too wide. Here you can see that the end of the short wall being right in the way of one of the top cutouts on the large wall. The large wall was supposed to stick out by design, but not by that much. The short wall was supposed to be disguised by the tall wall. Luckily, I had enough material to the left of the left star to cut the panel down to the appropriate width. This unfortunately eliminated the design symmetry, but it's really not that big of a deal. Nobody in the house but me actually cares about that little mistake. Uh, I also pre-drilled and screwed right through the, the this large panel and into the frame to secure it. The short wall is held in place with a clamp and secured to the tall panel with pocket hole screws from the inside face. And finally, the ladder is secured to both the platform frame and the other side of the short wall. And I put my body weight on the ladder to compress the carpet just a little bit before positioning it. That way the bottom of the ladder doesn't want to swing. The ladder and the short wall width were established so that there was a one inch gap between the wall and the ladder. Now this, this one inch gap, it allows room at the floor for the baseboard so you don't have to uh, notch the ladder. In this picture, I'm sitting on the platform with my back against the wall and the platform panel was just secured with a few screws into the frame below. The bookshelf was secured to the inside of the large wall with a few pocket hole screws and with the beanbag chair in place, this project was done. We decided to build this project instead of buying an indoor reading tent, and we are so glad we did. It really transformed the room into a great play area where she can not only sit and read, which yeah, at her age, it's just us reading to her and her flipping the pages, but she's really interested in reading, which is great, reading and, and books in general but also a place for her to be physically interactive with her environment. Now, of course, she's too young to use the ladder on her own right now, and we never let her in the playroom unsupervised, but she will definitely grow into it probably much faster than what I care to think about. This is when I was, I was hoping to get one of those moments of, hey, Dad, I, I, I very much appreciate this, and it's so much fun to play in here, and thank you so much, and I love you. Uh, but, you know, she, she can barely even say a few words, let alone full sentences, so I guess the smile is basically the same thing. <laughs> I'll take it that way anyway. Uh, this is a really easy project that anyone can make with just a few tools, like a circular saw, a jigsaw, a miter saw, to drill. And for those who are interested, I do have a set of plans with a shopping list, cutting list, step-by-step -step 3D assembly diagrams. And a link to that is in the video description if you are watching this on YouTube. Check out my website, jacescustomcreations.com, and sign up for my email newsletter so you don't miss anything that I publish, even the stuff that doesn't have a video to it. Uh, thanks for watching, and have a great day.